Live, man, oh man, is there a lot to talk about when it comes to politics, Jackie? Yeah, we love checking in every once in a while to kind of see what's happening. Of course, we have our two experts. We have a uh, Jeff Link. Who I think looks that's like Jeff. Letterman. Is that Jeff? <laughs> yeah, that's Jeff over. Uh, with, I'm in disguise. <laughs> <laughs> with uh, Democrats and Craig Robinson uh, representing the Republicans this morning. How are you doing, gentlemen? You hanging in there? Doing great. Thanks. Man. Okay, okay. Well, thank you for joining us because apparently we have a lot to talk about. Yeah, let's uh, just dive right into this uh, head first. Uh, let's talk about the U.S. Senate race because uh, this is getting pretty heated and we're still months away from the election. It's been an interesting week. Uh, Craig and I were just talking about this before. Um, you know, it, I think Senator Ernst is just in one of those cycles where she just can't quite get out of the bad news cycle. This week, she was recorded making some comment uh, about how hard she's been working in Washington, D.C. And then she said, well, my opponent is sitting in her basement taking selfies with her dog, Ringo. And she actually named Greenfield's dog, uh, which, of course, the Greenfield campaign seized upon this and said, uh, I stand with Ringo. And the thing went viral on Twitter and, and Facebook. Uh, and she ended up raising $132,000 in one day this last week, just talking about uh, my opponent uh, just attacked my dog. So, uh, wow. you know, it's one of those things where you, as an incumbent, uh, you just got to stop when you're when you're digging yourself a hole. And, and the Ernst campaign has not figured out how to stop digging. Well, and sometimes it's it's just difficult to even know you're digging. You know, you you get in these campaigns, and I've been on. I'm sure Jeff's been in on campaigns like this before. Oh, where, six years ago, I was. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's just like you're constantly fighting the momentum. Just seems to be going against you. You're constantly trying to to walk upstream, and no matter what you do, you take a big step forward. You think, and it you still feel this resistance. And so, to me, the Ernst campaign has to get back to basics here. Um, and 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 really focus in on this. And I don't think she's really been helped by her TV ads. You know, in Iowa, we we're used to, you know, Chuck Grassley's notorious for these ads about his lawnmower or the two old ladies talking on the couch about his Twitter and they're concerned about it. And, you know, Joni's squeal ad that we saw last time. And what we're seeing out of the Ernst campaign uh, this time is a really slick, I would say overly produced, um ad that's kind of talking about her background and i think there's just a more direct way they could have done it i mean they have some great great stuff they have a great ad with her and her daughter and i think they would have been better off to reintroduce joni that way than the the way that they're going and and to the greenfield campaign's credit um not only do they seize on all these little opportunities that come their way um their ads are good i think that that you know they've made her relatable and 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 come down to talk to people who are working class folks that she is she's come across and said i'm just like you and i don't think joni has done that and that's again why i think that ever since this primary has been over um joni ernst has been dealing with just this working against this momentum against her but don't you think it's because well, Teresa is taking a page from Joni? Like, she's very grassroots, all of her commercials, you know, they're on the farm, they're kind of basic imagery and messages, but they're hitting at the heart of, I guess, what Iowans right. are looking for right now. What blows my mind is the amount of money being spent already for this campaign on both sides. And as you pointed out, Jeff, uh, you know, mentioning a dog, it tugs at people's heartstrings and they're throwing... That's pushing the button. ...more money that direction. I mean, I, we're talking huge huge uh, amounts right now during a pandemic even. Yeah, well, hold on, because there's going to be a lot more coming in the next 10 or 12 weeks, uh, because this is such a highly targeted race. This race literally could shift the balance of the United States Senate from the Republicans to the Democrats. And that's why there's so much money coming into the state. But, you know, a lot of this stuff is self-inflicted on, on Senator Ernst's part. And just a week or so ago, uh, she was asked about the Supreme Court, and and they said, well, uh, what would happen if there was a vacancy that would occur after the election? And, of course, this is what just happened a couple years ago, four years ago, and the Republicans held, uh, uh, held a seat open, hoping that uh, Trump would get elected, and, and, of course, he did. 
And uh, th they said, well, there's no precedent for uh, moving ahead with the vote. That's why we got to leave this seat open. And Ernst was asked about this last week. And she says, well, yeah, even if we lose the Senate, even if Trump loses, uh, because there's a Republican Senate and a Republican president, we'll, we'll put somebody in if there's a vacancy. Well, she would have never said that in 2014. She would have never thought like that in 2014. Um, and to Craig's point, you know, the Greenfield campaign is, is really telling the story that she's gone Washington. Uh, but the truth is, Ernst is telling the story that she's gone Washington, and they're just repeating it. Craig, we want to give you time to respond. Well, sure. I think that there's just um, there's just a lot of different things, and I think Joni, um, in this pandemic, you know, we're we're it's difficult to campaign, and so when you're dealing with a lot of times, the narratives that you're fighting on a campaign are really stuff that you see on TV, on the airwaves, and all that stuff, and you can break out of it when you are um, when you're able to have campaign events and do some stuff and show some grassroots movement. Those things aren't really available to these candidates this cycle. And so it's even more difficult, I think, to kind of change the narrative of a race. I mean, that's why you have to be spot on at the start um, and, and to change. I mean, we saw Bruce Braley six years ago. He was never able to do it. He made a comment about Chuck Grassley being a, a hick farmer early in the race before in the primary. And then he couldn't live it down. And then we were talking about therapy chickens and and at Holiday Lake in Brooklyn and, and on and on and on, um, you, you kind of get this sense that Joni Ernst is kind of in that same rut. And I don't know what she can do to kind of shake it out of this race. They got to find something. Um, but it's difficult. And there's going to be, as you mentioned, there are millions and millions of dollars. This, this race will set a record in Iowa that might stand for a long time in terms of total money spent on a Senate race. I mean, I think we're, we're looking at we're not looking at tens of millions of dollars. We might be looking at a hundred million dollars. Wow. wow, that's absolutely amazing. incredible. You but know, more importantly, Craig, uh, Cubs, they're doing pretty darn well right now. <laughs> you know, I'm glad we could talk to something that'll brighten the moods of most people. <laughs> in <Central Iowa. laughs> so eight and two, that pitching staff's great. And, you know, I didn't know if, if getting rid of Joe Mann was the right thing to do, but my Lord, everything's clicking, so let's go. So right, far, so good. good. All right, gentlemen, we, lo we love getting your perspective <laughs> on everything. Uh, Jeff and Craig, uh, both sides. So here's what we want to do. Uh, I want to see if we can talk to you guys after Biden makes his vice presidential selection uh, and get your take on what that is and what that's going to mean uh, in the next couple of months. If we can do that in the next week or so, that'd be great, too. Does that sound no like a game plan, Absolutely. gentlemen? Yep. All right. Thank All right. you guys so much. So great to see you guys. Thank you. Bye now. You All guys right. take care.